Welcome to Hello English Teacher. Today let's look at some of the important questions and answers from class 12 English Literature. If you are watching my video for the first time, please subscribe. You can listen to the answers and explanations of lessons from classes 10, 11 and 12 English. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a video. Let's move on to the video now. So now let's move on to the question answers from the literature section. So you know that in your board question paper the C section is literature where you will have to write question and answers for 2 marks and 4 marks. So the short answers are the 2 marks questions where you may need to write at least 30 to 40 words each for each answer. So let us look at the first question. I never pretended to be anything about anything but a poor trader and I pleaded and begged to be allowed to stay in the forge. At worst, I can put on my rags again and go away, said the peddler. Do you think the ironmaster was justified in sending the peddler away? So here is the answer. So the ironmaster had himself invited the peddler, promising him Christmas cheer. He was not justified in throwing him out because the peddler was coaxed to accept the invitation which he had declined. So we know that the peddler did not come on his own. He was invited by the iron master and his daughter and he was actually coaxed to accept the invitation. So we can say that he was not justified in being thrown out. So we cannot justify the iron master for throwing him out. So let's look at the second question. How did the civil disobedience movement triumph in India? So this question is from the chapter Indigo. The government was baffled, the trial was postponed, Gandhiji was released without bail, the judge didn't deliver the judgment, an official commission of inquiry was appointed to look into the grievances of indigo sharecroppers, Gandhiji was successful in getting justice for the sharecroppers. So this is how the civil disobedience movement triumphed in India. Also know that there was a huge crowd gathered in front of the courthouse while the trial was on and this was actually in support of Mr. Gandhi and that is why the government itself was baffled. They could not control the crowd and they wanted Gandhiji's help to control the crowd. So they understood the power of the people or power of Gandhiji and his supporters. So next question. How does the poem, A Thing of Beauty, depict the poet's love for nature? So, the answer is Keats was a great lover of nature. We know that Keats was a British romantic poet. So, for him, the beauty of nature was eternal. It transcends time and space. He says that a thing of beauty is joy forever. Its loveliness increases with time. It comes to us like an endless fountain of immortal drink from the heaven. So he says that everything around us is so beautiful and we are all bound to all these beautiful things and they keep coming to us in the form of an immortal drink. So he depicts his love for nature in this manner. Question. The tigers represent her spirit and her hands represent her reality. How? So this question is from the poem Aunt Jennifer's Tiger by Adrian Rich. So what is it telling? The answer is the tigers which Aunt Jennifer created through her art were free and fearless in contrast to her own personality. She, so she was bold and confident in spirit. Though her hands trembled and she could not pull a needle, her hidden desire to break free is depicted in the tiger she embroidered. So we know that Aunt Jennifer was a meek person, she was not bold, she had lots of sufferings and she had depicted the tigers which actually embodied her uh, spirit, her free spirit or her desire to be free and bold. So now let's look at the next question. Why does Joe say, you said Roger Fish, what does this show about her? So this question is from the chapter, should visit him mommy by John Updike. So the answer is, children feel thrilled and amused when their elders make mistakes and correct them. So here we know that Roger, Jack, the father, was telling a story to Joe. 
and he made a mistake by saying Roger's fish instead of Roger's skunk. So she found that mistake and so she was so amused. So Jo felt very amused when her father forgot that he was narrating the story of a skunk instead of a fish. Children are corrected by their parents. So they are thrilled when they get a chance to do this. So next question. The examination of Evans was held on June 8th. Why do you think the governor talked to the secretary of the examination board so early in March? So here is the answer. The governor was aware that Evans was a mastermind at escaping and he had done so thrice. So we know that he was called as Evans the break because he had tried to escape from prison three times. So he wanted to gather all the details beforehand to take all the precautionary security measures. So the governor did not want to give any chance for Evans to escape. So he had to take all the precautionary measures. So now let's look at some long answer questions. Long answer here in the sense four marks questions. So you will have two mark questions to answer and the last subdivision division is the four mark answers. So let us look at the questions. Question number one. Give a character sketch of the crofter compared to the peddler. Do you believe that the crofter was also in any way instrumental in reforming the peddler? Give reasons. So here is the answer. The crofter was a generous and kind hearted man. He welcomed a stranger, a vagabond to his house with open arms. So he welcomed the peddler though he was a stranger. The crofter lived alone without a wife or a child but that did not make him bitter like the peddler. He offered food to the peddler and then he carved off a big slice of his tobacco roll and shared it with him. He played Mayolis, a game of cards with the stranger. The crofter worked at Ramsdow Ironworks in his days of prosperity. He could no longer do labor so he lived off his cow giving him enough milk to support him. So he had no one to share his joy with, so he shared it with the peddler. He appears to be a very warm and friendly fellow. The crofter doesn't seem to affect the behavior of the peddler as he didn't think of his hospi hospitality when he stole his 30 kroner. However, when another act of kindness in the form of Edla's generosity came his way, he must have thought of the crofter. So that is why he left the 30 kroners at Edla's house with a request to return them to the crofter. So the indirect influence of the crofter's goodness can be seen in the reformation of the peddler. So let us look at the next question. Blind people only ought to be with other blind people and idiot boys with idiot boys, says Derry. What kind of a world would that be, says Mr. Lamb. Discuss the underlying meaning of the above statements. Do you think Derry's remark is justified? So this question is from the chapter on the face of it. So let us look at the answer. So the actual pain or inconvenience caused by physical impairment is often much less than the sense of alienation felt by a person with disabilities. So they feel more sad when you alienate them than the pain which is caused because of their di disability. So Derry's remark is evidence to prove that handicapped people should not be subject to intense pity or sympathy. People unwillingly continue reminding them of their handicap either by words or actions. Derry believes that if such people were isolated it would be healthier as they would not have any inferior complexes or be exposed to hateful comments. Derry felt that the handicapped could be better company for each other. That is why he avoids all people. Derry's statement is a sad reflection. So his statement is a sad reflection of reality of how normal people do everything to avoid the company of physically impaired people. Mr. Lamb believes the opposite. Just as flowers and weeds grow together, so can normal and handicapped people mutually benefit from each other. So normal people will learn compassion, grace, perseverance and resilience while the physically impaired can learn to be productive and make fruitful use of whatever abilities they have. Handicapped should remain normal people that suffering can visit anyone at any time. We should ensure a wholesome world that knows no discrimination 
fences of pre prejudice do not bother that so it should be a cohesive world a world that is bonded together by mutual feeling of brotherhood so now let's look at the third question analyze the myth of endymion in the context of the poem a thing of beauty so we know that this question is from the poem a thing of beauty by john keats so the poem is an excerpt from the first epic poem by john keats endymion written in 1818 the title of the poem is borrowed from endymion's very first lines according to a greek mythology endymion was a beautiful young shepherd who lived on mount latmos in asia minor he was in love with the moon deity selene also called cynthia in this admiration the enchanted shepherd decided to seek her the poem echoes the shepherd's enjoyment of walking in the woods and enjoying the lovely sights of en the environment the beauty will produce a joy in the soul that is eternally transmitted in the poem nature gives life a new meaning through its beauty so whatever is seen around is described as beautiful and the whole nature itself is a beautiful thing that inspires all of us so i hope these answers will help you in some way thank you for watching for more informative videos watch and subscribe to hello english teacher